Marcus Conti, sanitation enforcement agent, former investigative journalist, plaintiff in Conti versus DSNY. Today we're going to look at uh, another write-up. Almost done. This is the uh, from the gift that keeps giving. This is uh, Alvin and Mosquito once again. This is very, very revealing. This particular write-up is almost the definition of retaliation. And you'll see by the dates. The dates are the most important thing. So, pow, here's the here's the write-up. You see the whole write-up. Holy smokes, DSNY 229, most severe write-up one can get. Okay? Now, the, the thing about it, most importantly, is the date of occurrence, right? The date of occurrence of this horrific thing that happened that was worthy of the most severe write-up that led to termination was April 13th, 2015. We'll get, we'll get to that date, but just, re, just look at the timeline for a second. April 13th, 2015, right? New agent just came in there, March, April, second month, right? And there you are in the zone in Manhattan, right? So the next one, uh, the next slide will zero in on the date that the that this magnificent thing was prepared, right? It wasn't served; it was just prepared, right? So you see, seven seven two thousand fifteen, I'm a mosquito, uh, seven seven two thousand fifteen, right? That's when he began to pen this piece of paper, this horrible thing that happened. But I still don't know that there's any right up coming right so then we continue along and we look at well what what actually before we look at what actually happened what were the violations 5.1 failure to carefully use maintain and operate department vehicle equipment 5.13 damage city property or equipment 317 electronic equipment holy smokes what the hell did conti do this time let's look alan Mesquita, associate sanitation enforcement in that april 13th right so now he's he prepared it in april may june july he waited all the way till july to even think about putting this down on paper right right and what happened sea conti on april 13 2015 while working 95 in manhattan exited a vehicle and failed to secure his handheld Right, HHT 035. Right, this caused the handheld to hit the ground and sustain damage on the front screen. Okay, right, that did that did happen. Right, no, there's no no denying. Right, this is okay. This is the equivalent of you, you know you pretend you're a carpenter and you have your you know your screwdriver and your hammer and you drop your screwdriver or you drop your hammer or you know you. You know, you you accidentally back into a wall, and you know you put a hole in a piece of sheetrock, or you knock over a can of paint. Right? It it they're accidents. Accidents happen. They happen all the time. How do you how do you know that this is an incidental thing that people drop stuff? People in, in enforcement, people crash cars, they drop radios, they lose radios. Right? So because of the date, the the fact that. He waited three months to even to even write it down, right? So that was the, the horrific thing. And I'll tell you what happened, right? I was exiting a vehicle, right, on the passenger side. And the, the, the handheld has a swiveling mechanism, right? And it got caught on the, on the, uh, uh, the seatbelt, right? So when I got out, the thing got caught on the seatbelt and flipped around in the case and it fell on the floor. And it cracked the the uh, the it cracked the front of the handheld. Okay, so I called and I said, "Oh, I cracked my handheld because it fell out of the fell out of the swivel." Right? It's not a big deal, right? It's not a big deal. There's no information lost. All the tickets were uh, maintained uh, within the electronic device. I talked to Mr. Um, Mr. Amoskita. And he said, oh, as long as you didn't throw it up against the wall, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal, right? And that was the end of it, right? That was the end of that story, right? Remember, this is also the guy who who lied to uh, lied in the DSNY position statement and said that DSNY does not have a uh, a quarter of tickets. Then never DSNY never instructs uh, agents to write a certain number of tickets. So this that's where this is coming from. That's who this guy is. All right, so then you, you drop down, you see his signature, right? When did he sign it and when was I served, right? Eight, all the way in August 14th. 
Now, here's the big date, right? I filed in June. I filed EEO complaint in June 19, 2015. So you see, so it happened in April, then I file in June, then in July, he starts to prepare the paper, and then here we go. Here's, here's one of, this was one of the write-ups that was in a stack of five with two extra ones that they were trying to stick in my back, right? So this is actually one of seven write-ups, five of which uh, allegedly they stuck, right? So it, all the way in August 14th. So you see the setup, right? Right. Here's a guy, and he, he, just the digging, digging through the rubbish to find a a write-up, right? So, so that that's the way it is. This is again retaliation for uh, for filing an EEO complaint. You see the you know the pattern. So that's all I want to say about it. It's self-explanatory. Again, it's a guy who drops. It's a carpenter who drops a screwdriver on the job. He he says, "Hey, by the way, I dropped my screwdriver. You got another screwdriver." Uh, I, really, that is the equivalent. It's not. It's not like I'm minimizing it. There's no doubt that the thing did spin around and fall on the ground, but it's not worthy of the most severe write-up, which leads to termination. Not ever. Nobody. There's no other situation where that has ever happened. So, peace out.